What's up guys, Shay Stevens here, PDGA number 77522, and today we're taking a look at a new course in the area, Tornado Crossing Disc Golf Course. Let's get to it. So a few weeks ago, I was on the South Jersey Disc Offers Facebook group and saw a new course is being installed in Mantua, New Jersey. It's about 40 minutes from my house. It's right by Pittman, New Jersey, where Alcyon Woods is. And my first thought was, dang, the rich keep getting richer. You guys have a great trifecta of courses in that area, and you're getting another one. It is nice to be you guys. Uh, but I saw they have nine holes installed, and they have longs and shorts. So to play 18, you play the longs and you play the shorts. And I thought I'd head out there one day after work to give it a shot. So yeah, I, you know, brought my discs with me to work with my filming rig. Uh, and as soon as I got out of work, I jetted across the bridge. Unfortunately, there was a major accident across the Walt Whitman, uh, and that delayed me a bit. So you are going to see me kind of hustling a bit because I do not have as much daylight as I would like to make sure I get this round in. Uh, but without further ado, let's check out the long tees. Hey everyone, welcome to Tornado Crossing Disc Golf Course. Chestnut Branch Park, Manchester, New Jersey. As you can see, the course is still a work in progress, but I had some time. I wanted to come check it out, see what's going on. So hole one, uh, they got longs and shorts. I'm going to be doing two laps. I'm playing the longs first. 377 foot par three to start off. Looks like you go through this gap and to the left. Looks like a really hard left though. I don't know if you can carry that in one really. It'll be a heck of a hyzer flip to not flat. So I'm just going to put a terra nice and flat down the middle. Hopefully give myself an easy upshot. Uh, working on staying on my toes. Yep. First throw out of the car. We're playing. Yes, you guys can see it is a definite carry to get left on this one. That is a demanding par three to start your day. Just nice little entropy, up and under. Tap in that par and get out of here. And tapping. I hold two, that away. Hold two. One T pad, so it places both long and short. Dang, this is a jackknife left. All right, double mandos, you can see on the series. 258. I don't know if there's a way to catch. You almost have to like throw, throw like a nose up stall shot inside line that just gets a heck of a lot of carry left. Don't think that's possible. So I'm just gonna play it smart. So you know, nice easy deflector through this gap on hyzer. Just dump it out there and then play my up shot. All right, let's see how we do. Alrighty, this is a really tricky fairway, guys. I pushed a little bit long into the side rough here. So, uh, options are kind of tight. I go wide on a big turnover or forehand, throw something low on the inside, or I can go over everything. Which I think I'm gonna do, because I think this is gonna be the easiest shot. Oop. All right, heard it hit. <laughs> Didn't see where it went though. I wanted to run out, but I want to block you guys. Let's see where it's at. All right, guys, I left this one woefully short. Let's find out, is my putting on today? Hey, my putting's on. Okay, on to hole three. 297 foot par three. Heck of a tunnel to hit. So I go down to the right and just keep carrying to the right, it looks like. Tree in the middle of the fairway, blocking the perfect line. I'm gonna go with my uh, rhythm. Pretty much aim in left gap, hoping it actually turns into the right of that tree. And hopefully just keeps carrying. Stay back, shift. Working on the footwork. Pushed it wide. 
but it rode that left edge. Let's see how it do. All right, so I thought the basket would actually follow the line of this road. It's gonna be a nice cut off fairway, but it actually took the tree just inside, right about where my disc landed. Also, uh, Brian, I found your Rock 3. I'm gonna be giving you a call in a minute. Hey, first birdie at Tornado Crossing. All right, hole four is a big hyzer hole, 339 feet. Sorry, it's a bit tricky with the angles. There's not much space behind the tee pad. So basically I'm trying to throw out to that branch you can kind of see coming out, just missed this thing. And I'm hoping I can do a little bit of a flippy move on the trance to get some carry and then glide left. Ooh, or just go super inside. All right, a little premature discolation, but let's see how that worked. Yeah, you definitely want to air that shot out, give it some more air out to the to the right, and let it glide in. I am early here in the rough, and honestly, all I have is a little backhand up shot. All right, a little short, but should have that putt. All right, cleaned up that par. Hello, East Coast Golf. Hole five, 326, par three. What a shot. Tree in the middle, or sorry, ladder in the middle. Don't know what that's for. Definitely, I think it's a forehand shot, and I think I got it today. So I'm just gonna hit this photon, a little bit of Annie. Hopefully drift it left of the tree in the middle. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully she carries the basket. Oh, pushed it wide, short-armed it. Oh, up and down. All right, so definitely got some work to do here. So I do have a straight shot with a large tree at the end, or I have the backhand turnover. That is a heck of a carry. But I like it, actually. So let's line this up, get my footing good. I love the Envy. A little deep, I think, but should be a pet. Yeah, I went long out the back on this one, guys. But inside the circle still. A little bit of goofy footing, though. Drops it in. All right, so I was told it's all on you, disc. The walk from five to six is really long. You actually cross over hole eight's tee pad. So I figured why not do a little walk and talk on this journey. So I was really excited to see this course pop up, actually, because I think the area needs a good nine holer. I mean, they did a great job with Stafford's design where you can play nine holes and you know just come and go as you please because uh you know one in ten are right at the parking lot and nine and 18 pretty much terminate by the parking lot as well so you could do your nine hole loops there but stafford is always super popular usually has a good crowd when the weather's good but i thought this area definitely needed a nine hole course first thoughts the longs are hard uh i'm kind of hoping for more beginner style but again i am playing the longs i got the shorts coming up next so we'll see how that goes uh does need some cleaning up I actually ran into one of the course designers on my way in uh sorry if i tell you my name by the way uh i'm terrible at meeting people uh so uh but he was saying you know this is a work in progress and you can tell you know there's a lot of work being done on the fairway a lot of you know clearing you can see piles of stuff so work in progress which is always cool and then you know you, know, you obviously got to work around local governments when you're working with parks like this. And for those who don't know the area, like Jersey was one of the last states to really like embrace disc golf. Uh, it's been surging recently, just getting courses in, but they are a bit behind and uh, they're just very protective of their 
natural spaces, which you can totally understand. So it is a very, you know, you got, you got to slow play the, uh, the local councils and stuff just to, you know, get them to warm up to the idea of disc golf and, you know, what it can do uh, to bring people out into nature. So yeah, this is hole eight we're walking through right now. Hole six a little further. But yeah, first th first thoughts on the, on the longs are, I think they just need a little bit more cleaning up. Uh, it's, there are hard shots, but they're kind of like, they're kind of funky. Like they're not like high end skill challenge demanding shots. They're just kind of like weird, absurdly sharp hyzer lines. And then maybe again, if you want to keep this as a beginner course, consider just adjusting the pars. Like, I mean, it's I'm okay with having 300 foot par fours. Uh, oh, it looks like we have arrived at hole six. I'll obviously give my final thoughts on the longs at the end of the video. Let's get on to the next hole. All right, this is my nightmare. Hole six, 523 foot par four and a heck of a tunnel to get out of. So, when in doubt, play it, it's a par four, cut it in half, make it easy, go in rhythm. I could honestly Heiser flip a fission photon, but this gap is scaring me right now. So I'm just gonna do a nice soft rhythm, good amount of Heiser, let it carry, maybe get a little, little bit of flip, and should give me an access to the green, which is kind of just straight out, maybe a little to the left. Yep. Nice and schmoove. Okay, so I thought we were going to the gap over that away. But we are going this away. So being to the right would have been better. That right gap looks a lot bigger. Uh, so I can't, there's a straight line, but it is just, it's like a five foot gap I need to hit in about 150 feet or so. Don't know if I got that in me today. So I'm going wide gap. Fission reactor on a good amount of highs. I'm going to hopefully flip a little bit. And if I beat the tree I'm looking at, it's like too deep on the right. I should have something. Ooh, I went wide and got sniped. All right, let's see where that leaves me. So, actually, because you can't see the bottom of the basket, it was a good little uh, deception there. I, it looked further away than it was. So you could probably actually, I could have probably gotten there with an Envy. So lesson learned. Let's get a little chip shot up and uh, get my par and get out of here. Unless I throw it in. Ooh, just a little, just behind it. Right. Don't think I mentioned this yet. You guys have obviously seen disc catchers, pristine. Gotta love to see it. Oh, and this thing is just annoying enough. All right, straddling out. A little rough for filming, but a cool tee pad. I like the recessed down here, making you throw up. Basket's out in the field. I think a photon is gonna be in order, just because of the elevation we're working with here. Yeah, oh, definitely, par four, 438. There was a short tee, yeah, all right, this is the long. Okay, so I can go either Blast one on the inside and go for the eagle if I'm feeling that nah, definitely not. Not today. We're going wide. And you actually want to use all the T pads. You don't want to be up on the front when you're throwing. Boop. All right. Should be simple. If anyone knows what the pool noodles on a stick are all about, Please let me know in the comments. There's a few over there too. These are a line. Just curious to know what the heck these are. All right, guys, no surprises here. There's a stock entropy shot. Ooh, that I left short. All right, I may have just thrown away a very easy birdie. 
Definitely working harder for it than I want to. Oh, pushed it right. Ugh. That stinks. All right, on to hole eight, 516 foot, par four. So again, just put a shot out there. Don't mess up the upshot this time and get the birdie. I like this little tunnel you have to go out in the, in the out of the T area. It takes off some airspace. So you gotta get this disc up to clear the little uh, ridge in the hill, but you can't go too high or you hit trees, you can't go too low or you turf it. So this is gonna be really fun. Good amount of air and good rip. Yep, nice and smooth out into the field. All right, not gonna short it this time. Gonna throw it properly. I'm gonna throw the tempo this time, give it a little extra carry. Drop. See what we're working with. All right, still came up a little short, but should definitely be in my range. Garage putts. Okay, wrapping up hole nine. 388 foot par three. I like this as a good finishing hole just to let everyone let loose. Looks like trouble on the left, so right is the safer play. Let's see if I can tap into something here. Would have liked a little flip out of it, a little more. All right, might have a stepper. All right, definitely in my step putt range. Let's see if we can go with a bang. Ah, oh, all right, good bit. I am gonna tap that in, guys. Not gonna lie, I was running these last couple holes because. I thought I had enough daylight, but the clouds are rolling in and taking it from me. So for final thoughts, back to Shea. And that'll wrap up my round from the long tees on these nine holes at Tornado Crossing Disc Golf Course. Uh, I thought it was just going to be a nine hole course, but I joined the Facebook group and saw there is a map and plan for a full 18. Uh, so really looking forward to that. Uh, I actually ran into the course designer on my way to hole one. Uh, and he said, uh, you know, this is a work in progress, you know, it's definitely not the final iteration. So excited to see what happens there. Uh, my thoughts so from the long tees holes one through four are a bit janky, not a big fan of the shot shapes. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, though. Love them. Wouldn't change a thing. Five is tight, but Hey, welcome to East coast golf and seven in particular. I really like putting that, uh, tee down in that pit and making you throw up. They have the retaining wall there. So looks great. Really love that work. Really adds character to the course. And elevation change is something you always struggle with in New Jersey. So just adding that little feature uh, is just you know a very unique shot that I think will add some character to the course. So good job there. Uh, for my final thoughts, I'm going to hold off until we go through the short tees together just because uh, if I do any you know humble recommendations to move anything or suggestions, I want to make sure we take a look at the short tees first so we don't, you know, end up moving stuff on top of them or messing with them. So be on the lookout for my round uh, from the short tees. I will have that out as soon as possible. Uh, and before I go, I just want to let everybody know um, it seems to be very popular. I did a review of the time lapse. I'll have it linked for you. Yep, up there. Uh, and spoiler alert, I'm giving my time lapse away because uh, I can't throw it. <laughs> I have a baby arm and an injured shoulder and 12 speeds just aren't my thing. So uh, I got my tester from MVP and I don't want to just, you know, have it sitting somewhere. So I'm giving it away. Uh, all you have to do is just make sure you watch the video at the end. I give you all the details on how you can win it. I can't give it away until the official release, which is Black Friday, I believe. So I'll do the drawing as soon as I'm allowed to and get that out to you. So if you're interested, be sure to check that out. And um, with that, guys, I want to thank you for all your support. If you have any questions for me, reach out. I'll do my best to answer them. Take care.
Thank you to my sponsors. For all your disc golf needs, check out Phoenix Discs and Foundation Disc Golf.